Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. So right off, I want to say three things. First, I like to please people. Second, I like to help people. Third, I don't want to be controversial or cause trouble or upset the apple cart. Personally, I don't like drama and generally like it when people can just get along. So then, how do you see me? I would hope that you see me as normal, as balanced, as someone who just wants to get along with people and someone who is easy to get along with. In fact, I had a boss that used to call me Smiley. Whenever he needed something to be done, I would joyfully do it, no matter how trivial or how hard. And all I know is that we had fun on the job, even though the work was hard and often tedious, as construction often is. But we made the best of it, and I think we did quality work along the way. And I know, growing up at home, that there were no issues with my parents. If they asked us to do something, we did it. Sure, sometimes not right away, but there was no fighting or hollering or cursing or screaming. We had chores we were expected to do, and we all did them. It was called respect. So on the one hand, I really think that it's natural and meaningful to be accommodating to other people, be it family, friends, co-workers, or even strangers. That's the way I was brought up. And I also believe that if you are a religious person, it's even more important to live life consistent with your understanding of your purpose with God and in service to man. But there's another question that begs to be asked. So the question is, do you give and give because you want to, or is it because you're a victim of the doormat syndrome? Do you suffer from the doormat syndrome? Sometimes it's hard to hear, but sometimes other people, our friends, can see it better than we can. Here's the telltale sign. In general, when you do things for others, you feel appreciated for it and thanked, and there seems to be a balance in it and you don't mind it. But if there's someone in particular that walks all over you and that simply takes advantage of you, and again, this may be hard to hear, but for that one person or for a few, you may be a doormat. If that's a certain person or a few certain people who take advantage of us well beyond what is normal, who perhaps even violate your boundaries, then it does no good to us or to them to continue in that fashion. And that's when we need to set boundaries. And I wish it were otherwise, because that's when the stress and tension sets in. But again, there is no growth without work and pain. And sometimes both parties do need, well, let's call it boundary adjustments. A couple of signs for you to determine this is when it sometimes shows because you're not able to say no to something, even though you want to say no, or feel as if your voice isn't ever heard or listened to. But essentially, it's when you feel like you give, give, and give. Give more and give very little in return, including very little appreciation and very little willingness to return favors and expectations. And this becomes a constant and a constant drain. It's not a give and take situation, which is normal for families. It's a give and give and give and give and give and give situation. There's another name for this when it gets chronic. It's called codependency. Codependency is when you're subjected to a person or people with a lack of boundaries, or he or she has an inflated sense of self and self-priority or anger or entitlement, and you find them with a strange power over you. Codependent relationships are a type of dysfunctional helping relationship, usually where one person supports or enables another person's addiction, poor mental health, immaturity, irresponsibility, or underachievement. Although you feel your life has balance and harmony, you find yourself at odds here and living in a way or a situation that can create pain, resentment, bitterness, and even burnout. And yes, it seems as if you've become a doormat. Codependency is about living in an unhealthy relationship. It could be with oppressive roles or repressed emotions or an unhealthy pattern of or lack of intimacy in relationships. It can show up as anxiety, depression, anger, or fear. Often codependents may develop compulsions of their own and sometimes themselves become reactive and manipulative. Sometimes they may find themselves driven to get out of the house and become involved in the community and just as often find that they withdraw from society within the house. 
Codependency is not an isolated incident or event, but is a condition itself of compulsive behavior, emotions, thinking, and reacting, often learned by family members in order to cope and survive in a family which is experiencing great emotional pain and stress. And it can have long-term consequences, especially in relationships. A person who is a giver can become perfectionist and an overachiever, become a caregiver, always solving other people's problems, even to the neglect of their own. Many become isolated and do not feel a part of any system. Some become adrenaline junkies. Some become manipulative. Some become workaholics. Some become lost or invisible. Some become defensive and hypersensitive to criticism. Some lose their resiliency to cope with life, the ability to bounce back. And some develop alcohol or drug problems or even nervous disorders themselves. A hallmark sign of codependency is emotional pain. But a codependent can also have low self-esteem, a tendency to fix other people, become a chronic people pleaser, neglect their own problems, overcommit themselves, and let others keep hurting them. So the question is, how do I fix it? The question is, how do I solve it? Well, there are three steps to start change. First, you really need to admit you aren't a doormat and refuse to be. Believe it or not, that step can be the most difficult. We like to believe that we're in control, but unless we actually verbalize that and feel strongly about it, we're not ready for the next step. Second, you have to be okay with the idea that things are going to change, and sometimes if someone isn't getting their wants met by you, they may go elsewhere, and that's okay. It usually isn't abandonment, but when you change the dynamics, other things are free to happen, usually good, but sometimes not. People may get angry with you, even furious. After all, you're not taking care of every one of their needs anymore. But it isn't your fault. It's the responsibility of other parties to accept change, to mature in a healthy, balanced manner. It may get emotional, and it may last for even several months. Change often does, but it'll be worth it in the long run. And third, reach out for help. Use your family, use your friends, join a self-help group, or call for an appointment with a professional counselor. We all need help at one point or another, and the help is there just for the asking. Codependency can be a lonely and tired place to live. You don't have to stay there forever, though. Even if it feels helpless, you can change. You can learn to make yourself a priority. The journey is not easy, but so worth it. Hey, be safe, be well, take care of others, but be sure to take care of yourself. And may God bless.